Hello and welcome to our very first V-Ray lesson here using Rhino uh, 6 and V-Ray 3. If you want to follow along, go ahead and open up Eamsply for V-Ray rendering start and we can get started. Okay, so as you see we have um, some text objects here, a, a Noguchi table, some Eames chairs, a few different uh, primitives. All right, now we also have V-Ray is set to be our current renderer, all right? If this is our very first time in V-Ray or your first time in V-Ray, what you're going to want to do is switch from the Rhino render, the default render, to V-Ray. And you can do that by going up here to the Render tab, clicking on it, going down to almost the very bottom, and clicking from Rhino render to V-Ray for Rhino, okay? Once you do that, you should have these icons pop up. If these icons up here do not pop up, they might be hidden somewhere else, of course. Uh, another way to get to those is to go to Tools, Toolbar Layout, which is right here. There we go. And you should have two tabs up here. One should say Default, the other one should say V-Ray for Rhino. The only one I have uh, selected right now is V-Ray Compact, and you can go ahead and hit OK. I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK. And once you do that, this little menu should probably be flying out here somewhere in the, in the center, and you can go ahead and dock it. OK. So let's take a look at what these tabs do, or what they are at least, and then uh, in preceding lessons we will take a look at what they do. All right. If I hover over this first one, this will give me my asset editor and my file path editor. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit later. This one, this one, and this one are all dealing with rendering. All right, this one right here, if we click on that little triangle, the brown one, all of that is dealing with different types of V-Ray lights. Okay, this one here is dealing with proxies. Okay, this one and this one little thing that looks like uh, grass that will allow you to add fur and then this one here will allow you to add an infinite ground plane which we'll use in a moment and we're not going to concern ourselves with these two guys just yet okay so let's go ahead now and take a look at if you want to follow along go ahead and click on this large round V and that's going to give us our asset editor all right now this asset editor is more or less the window that's going to be open most of the time that you're rendering in V-Ray. Okay, you're going to become very, very familiar with what we have here. All right, we'll talk about these four guys first. All right, so right now it's uh, we have our settings selected, but we're, I'm going to go to the first one. If I click on this, this will allow this little checkerboard. This is my material settings, okay? And what you can do here is you can create, edit, preview, all the different materials that are in your scene, okay? We don't have any materials in the scene right now. So that's why we don't see anything. Notice if we click on this triangle here to the left, we have a nice big long list of all kinds of materials that we can apply to our scene, right? And we also have a library which um, we've not selected just yet, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and close this so you don't get confused. Okay, this next one here, if I click on that, this is all of our lights that are in the scene that we can or cannot be using, okay? This one here is for V-Ray geometry. We don't have any V-Ray geometry in the scene yet. We don't have an infinite ground plane. We don't have any fur. We don't have anything like that. So it's blank at the moment. This one here is our settings, right? And so we can begin to click on these triangles and open them up or close them down to go ahead and begin to um, change more or less the render settings for our model. And this one right here is uh, for the rendering. So if I click on that little triangle here, we've got a few different types of rendering, right? This one here is for just standard render. So if I click on this teapot, I will get a standard render, or so I hope. All right, let's try that again. There we go. I'm getting a standard render. I may have been had a render uh, behind this scene. That's why we didn't see it. All right. Now you notice that right now that rendering is nothing more than a still image. You also notice that it's dark and it's very small and I have it set that way on purpose. Okay. Now there is 
being a little buggy right now. We're very, very early into um, this particular tutorial. We've, we've just started using Rhino 6, and we're also just starting to use V-Ray 3. So there may be some bugs that hopefully in a year or two, if you're watching these, um, you won't have anymore. All right. This uh, little guy here that doesn't want to seem to open is for the VFB, the V-Ray frame buffer, right here. And what that'll allow is, once you've got your VFB going, that will allow, in theory, for me to rotate this, and you'll see it update real time in this window here. I'm going to close that. I'm going to do this one more time. So, um, one more time back to my uh, V-Ray frame buffer. Here we go. And nope, it's not does not seem to be working today, and that's all right. There's another way to get an interactive render, and rest assured, later on we'll have that. If I click on this render with V-Ray interactive, this will allow me to move around and change my view, and it will the render will more or less um, update in real time. Okay, I can zoom in, I can zoom out. In theory, the VFB should be doing the same thing. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now uh, is I'm going to go ahead. You notice we've got, it's very, very dark here. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to add an infinite ground plane. Okay, and an infinite ground plane can be found right up here. So if I just click on this, I've added a ground plane to my scene here. And then you can see as I zoom in, I've got quite a bit more going on here. Okay. Now you'll also notice that this is just a tad washed out. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to give it a directional light. Okay. Now one of the tricks to adding a directional light is if you just make a directional light, it'll just snap to the ground plane, which I don't typically like to do. So I will just take a single line and I'll go to, I think because we're going to do, be doing most of our work from right about here, looking in this direction, I want to have the light behind me. So I'm going to give the um, ambient target, this uh, back corner here, and I'm going to draw a line to the back of this cube right here, snap to it, hold down my tab, and pull it. Okay, and that's fairly low angle, in fact, so I think I'm going to go ahead and rotate that up just a bit. There we go. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this. I'm going to snap my directional light to it. Okay, so and let's go ahead and compose this so we can really see what's going on. All right, so now I'm going to go up to my V-Ray lights, click here, and I'm going to find this guy here, which is a directional light. Remember, the directional light is just the direction that all of the ambient light is more or less coming from. It doesn't have anything to do with an actual location, right? It just has to do with the direction. So I'm going to click on this guy here, and I'm going to snap to the end, and I'm going to go back up here and snap. And as you can see, that really illuminated my scene. Okay. Now this light, again, is not a single light that's right here. I can move it just about anywhere in terms of up or down, and it won't make any difference at all in my scene, right? And so I actually am going to do that. I'm going to move, grab my gumball, pull this thing out of the way, just like that. Oh, it looks like I have another directional light. I'm just going to delete that, okay? Actually, I think I'll just put it back just to make it a little bit brighter in here, okay? So I'm going to zoom on in here. And what we have just done, we have not kind of finished composing things yet, but what we've just done is we've done a really quick tour of the interface. We've added a, an infinite ground plane. We have started an interactive render, and we've added a single light. Okay, not bad for six minutes. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the lesson here, and I will see you in the next lesson. Thank you.